going there, everybody? This is Samuel Fisher from Green Dispensary Marketing. Greg, excited to be back with another guest. This is Ryan McMullen from Zora Store Media. He's got some great information on email marketing, on building your customer list, and selling to your customer list. Really excited to get some insights from him. Um, how are you doing today, Ryan? Uh, I'm on top. It's it's pretty great. I'm glad you're uh, you're back in town. I know it's been a couple of weeks uh, since you've uh, one taken vacation and married the love of your life. So I'm excited to have you back. But I'm, yeah, you know, yeah I'm getting sure married will do that. You. You, you think you, yeah. yeah, like going into the wedding is like, oh yeah, I'll be able to still post and do content and all this. No, what, what, <laughs> no, what, you will not. <laughs> <laughs> just lose all the time and all these people come in, you know, to entertain all these people, but back to be back in the saddle. Um, but how about me? Let's talk about you, Ryan. And so tell me a little bit more about who you are and your journey as an entrepreneur. Sure. So, you know what? It's funny. It, so many people started like their entrepreneurial um, journey, if you will, as, as in, in multi-level marketing, which has kind of introduced me to it. So there's a uh, and, and I was terrible at it. You know, the multi-level marketing is you have to talk to everybody you know and anybody you see at the grocery store, hey, sign them up for this. And, and I hated it, but it got me to go down this um, digital marketing way or, or path because that's that was kind of the path of least resistance to get people to to sign up for your, for your multi-level marketing or network marketing program. Uh, but I, that never picked off me because I didn't like it. I didn't really know what I was selling. Uh, so then having, you know, created this knowledge base of digital marketing, I went into, okay, who do I want to work with? And that started me down the path of working with just some um, brick and mortar companies here in St. Louis, uh, which I've done for 20 something years. So, you know, we, we've worked with lawyers, uh, you know, granite fabricators, uh, you name it. That's, we've worked with them in some capacity or, the, or another. Uh, and then what brought me into the cannabis space was, I guess you could say um, a lot of people would kind of classify me as a, a contrarian from time to time. Um, this is probably the, the most vanilla way you could say that because it never set right with me how, you know, you know the story, you know, William Hurst owned all these trees and then hemp go, it becomes illegal because, you know, he's part of the elite class. And my sister-in-law has been in the space for 15 years. I'm like, well, and she does the operation side and helps, um, you know, groups win licenses. I'm like, well, you're very good at operations and I'm good at the marketing. So let's, let's do something together. And that was the kind of the genesis of uh, Zor Store, which is where we are right now. Yeah. So let's break this down a little bit. And so I was just checking out your website, looking at your LinkedIn. And yeah. so it looks like you have a really big, strong history in sales. I mean, it kind of led you to this, um, this new thing of helping people build their email lists and then sell to their email lists. And so I was just looking on your website and it says you, Help your average clients grow their email list by about 150 percent to six months, which is pretty good. Uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Um, what that entails? Yeah, so we. I mean, I, I just try to keep everything simple. I mean, you know, out there being in the marketing space, there are a million different strategies you could possibly use. Everybody's trying to sell you something, so we just decide, okay, let's keep this super, super simple. And we're just going to build an email list of buyers. And we do that right now with uh, programmatic programmatic ads, which are just basically display ads uh, on a, just a network of different websites that allow um, cannabis marketing, which a lot don't. Uh, so we're, we're kind of limited. Even, you know, Facebook doesn't really allow it. I'm not a huge Facebook fan. Um, Google kind of wants our money, but doesn't really want our money. So we have to play within, you know, a certain, uh, you know, lanes that allow us to do that. So we just go out there. So, you know, let's say there's a, you know, Samuel Fisher dispensary. And what we do is we find um, people, we, we look in your point of, uh, POS system. Okay, who are your 100 bus customers? Who spends the most money at your dispensary most often? You know, your, your lifetime value is out there. Let's find more people like that out there. And that's what the, the algorithm and the technology allows us to do now. And I, I, I hate using AI because everybody says the word AI, but it, it really is AI that allows us to find more people like that in that area. So, you know, we'll draw a circle around your dispensary, find more people like that, you know, get them in, into our world. Once they're in their world, they're buyers. We have their information and then we just 
you know, reach out to them regularly to sell them more often. So it's kind of, you know, do you want new customer, new business, or do you want more business? Well, I would argue everybody should want more business. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm curious also to learn a little bit more about the strategies um, behind, you said, uh, building your email list. And so you run programming mm-hmm. ads. Uh, would, you think, would you say that having a good SEO presence would also have a little bit to do, maybe you have a landing page and you can quickly gather an email from there, or maybe also in store, um, you kind of uh, balance all of these different things or you mainly focus on the programming ad space when you're helping to build your uh, email list. Yeah, so so we, we focus on the programmatic ads or the display ads, just to keep it simple. And what works really well are just simple, you know, 25% off this. And then we'll drive people typically to the a, a clearance page or whatever it is where, you know, the dispensary is already getting rid of this inventory for whatever reason, whether yeah, for, for a variety of reasons. Now, the SEO thing, it's 1,000% that works as well. It's just not my lane. Uh, I did that way back in the day. It's, God bless the SEO folks. Uh, not only myself who work in that, in that space, I, I, I just can't, I don't have the passion for it to keep up with it. So we just, I'm very data-driven. Uh, so we know that, okay, we spend this amount of money, and then we got this amount of return, and that's before we even do the email marketing. So our return on ad spend, we know every single penny that we've made because of our programmatic ads, which I know you can track that at, at, at doing SEO, uh, but it's, for me, it, you know, the SEO is kind of a lag where it takes a little bit longer to get there. Now, when you get there, it's freaking great, but I'm more of a, okay, we, these folks signed up with us, Let's let's get some... Let's get some results right away. So maybe I'm just impatient. My wife, my wife would probably agree with that. No, and I like the philosophy of kind of niching down to you. It's something that we've also been doing. So just not realizing, say, hey, we can't do it. Everything we'd like to do, just right. niching down, you know, focusing on the things that we are good at. And so I, I think it's awesome that you're also kind of doing the same. Um, I think I'm, one thing I'm also curious about is imagine you have this uh, new customer, somebody has a, excuse me, a new dispensary comes over to you. I know you focus mm-hmm. on multi-location dispensaries, but let's play let's play, play with this for a little bit. Let's imagine a new dispensary comes to you and they say, hey, we want to help building our we want help building our email list. We don't know how to get started. We don't know where to go. What would be the first strategy that you would recommend to them? Would you recommend these programming ads, even as a new dispensary, or what would you say to them? I guess it would kind of depend on the on the budget. Um, the the first thing I would tell them is for the love of God, anybody who walks in your door, get their email address um, and incentivize it somehow. Here's a 25% uh, off coupon. Uh, and every order you take, obviously you should be taking, uh, capturing that email uh, address. I mean, every, every single thing you do, because I, I really believe that is the biggest asset you have in your business. So it's, it's frustrating like with a, with a brand new dispensary like this, because it's such a small list but, you know, let's say you capture 250 emails per month for a year. Well, now you've got, what did that map, 3,000 people that you get to market to yeah. every day for essentially free, just your time and whatever the, the platform costs. So that platform could be 50 bucks a month. Um, and they are, they've proven that they are in our um, audience because they've obviously walked in the front door. And I, I read a stack the other day that, it's like six, uh, 40 to 60 people who walk into dispensary never walk back into that one again. Uh, so it's like they raise their hand. Hey, I, I love, you know, not love cans, but, you know, I'm, I'm a cannabis user or whatever, however you want to say it. But then nobody follows up with them to like, okay, well, guess what? Now we've got all this cool stuff and this cool stuff. And then it's just, you know, you got to touch them, you know, so many, so often they're, they're going to go past 10 different dispensaries to get to your place. I mean, I go past, five different gas stations to go to the one that I like, which is bad, you know what, insane because it's just gas. I, I don't really, I don't, I very rarely walk in. I just like that gas station. It's a little bit cleaner than the other one. And it's a commodity, but for whatever reason, that brand or whatever resonates with me, but if we're able to you know, talk to these people more and more often, then it's going to, they're, they're always just going to want to come to our, our dispensary. So it's kind of a long way of saying, yes, capture every email address you can. And if you have the budget, 
then yes, like I'm, of course, I'm biased towards, you know, the display ads because we can get it up and running quickly and then you can capture that. So that's, that's, that's what I'd said. I've said that to so many different restaurant owners, like, dude, you've got to, you've got to capture the email addresses from everybody who walks in here. Yeah, no, and it's so interesting because I know, for example, I'm working with a, with a guy right now, a dispensary owner who, his philosophy is, hey, let's not spam our customers. And so I, I was reading a LinkedIn post right. that you were uh, posting recently, how you say that you would write an email every single day. And I know this, this client, for example, he would say no. And so right. I'm, I'm just curious what, why you do that and kind of the results that you've seen doing that. So what started, we had, my cousin and I have a side hustle. Uh, it's in the golf fitness space. Uh, we've been doing that for 10 years and we write five to seven emails every week. And that's what drives the whole business. I think everybody in marketing has a side hustle, by the way. Um, I, yeah, I <laughs> it's, just, it's just part of the deal. Right? Mm-hmm. We can't like our marketing brains just never turn off. Uh, so that's what really sold me on the idea. And what it is, it's just educational and entertaining with a very, very soft call to action. Like, hey, go check this out. Not the, go buy the go buy our stuff right now. Because yeah. typically what you'll see is like most e-commerce stores. I mean, think of like big box stores. It is a uh, Target, for example. It's just a bunch of graphics of what's on sale. all the, And every day you get that. So it's buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. So every email we send is just, it's plain text. There's no logo. It just looks like it's coming from a friend. And they're just telling you about something cool. Uh, and that's it. And if you can make it funny and entertaining, even better. So that's that's why it works. And our um, you know, open rates are always right around 50%. So half the people still want to hear what we have to say, which had I not done this through our golf fitness company, I would have said exactly what your, what your client's saying. No, that's, that's insane. Nobody's going to want to open up these emails. But it works. Yeah, no, 50% is pretty good. I know I was recently talking to Ben Ziga about their open rates, and they're about 30%. And so, uh, Which is also very, very good. Yeah, 50%. Uh, you know, why, why do 30 and do 50? You know? So that's a pretty good <laughs> right. results right there. I'm also curious about your segmentation strategy. Do you kind of just bulk send, or do you segment based on their buying habits, um, like some others in the space? Or what's your philosophy right there? We, again, we keep it simple. We just send it to everybody. Um, it's, you you can find for every one of me, you'll find 10 people that says you have to segment, you know, the, these are your pre-roll people. Let's send an email about pre-roll these people. These are your flower people. These are your sativa people, whatever it is. And that probably, I think at the end of the day, we're probably done work a little bit better, but the effort involved in segmenting to that many people and the cost, I, I have yet to talk myself into that, that would work. Uh, like for golf fit. I mean, same thing. It's, it's so much more work to do that. So rather than just writing one email a day, now you're going to write <laughs> five to seven. That's a, that's a full-time job for, for somebody. And if you write and finding a good email copywriter is, is not cheap. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's the thing. So with, with a couple of our, our clients uh, who have just done con- some consulting, I know you're not going to like to hear this. We, we've talked about this. I've actually put together an AI prompt to help them at least get started um, and then go through there and plug, you know, put in your personality and the, and the dispensary's personality and how, how they would talk to somebody. So the AI, again, it's a great tool, but it only gets you, let's call it halfway there. And then you've got to do the work. Yeah. And so you've been making some pretty good uh, progress in this niche, I'm pretty sure here. And so I'm, I'm curious where A and B testing comes into play. And so, for example, you say you like doing plain text emails, you like writing every day. Uh, did you do some tests to kind of come to that conclusion? I'm assuming so, no? Uh, I, I've kind of have a men- not kind of, I do have a mentor. His um, name is Chris, who's been in the e commerce um email marketing space for 10 years yeah and i've read every everything that he's ever put out there i've, I've done a bunch of his classes I've, I've spoken to him personally a number of times and he's like we and again being the contrarian he does everything a little differently than most e-commerce um companies do and it's it just again I, I can't take credit for it it's just he, he showed me how to do it 
and his results, he gets really good results. We get really good results. I'm like, well, let's just keep doing this. And then, yeah, as far as like the A-B testing, I, I don't think I've ever once A-B tested an email. Hey, but if you're getting 50% open rates, uh, I think that's right. really good. It's just generating revenue. Uh, another, um, yeah. another thing I kind of didn't clarify super well on is automation. If you have some automation strategies, for example, somebody's opening your emails five times a week, if you send them a weekly promo or something like that in play too. Uh, not really. It's, I, I'm, I'm going to say the word simple 10,000 times a day. Um, the, the really the only autom yeah, the only automations we have are, um, <laughs> nice. Cool. There's my bride. Um, a, the browse abandonment sequence. So when someone is just browsing yeah. your website and they come across whatever this pre-roll, but they don't buy anything, then, uh, three emails are triggered. Hey, you forgot, you know, we saw you were looking, whatever it is. And then we also have a card abandonment sequence. So same thing with somebody actually took the next step to get it into the cart. Uh, which is huge. That those again, it's three simple emails. Hey, you forgot something. Is the subject because seventy percent plus of carts are abandoned, and it's usually something goofy. Like oh, like my wife just have happened to walk in the in the door, and then I forgot what I was doing. Uh, but then you get that email three hours later. Hey, you forgot this. Oh yeah, I did forget this. And then you finish your order. So that that captures a ton. So those automations, and then. When somebody is a new customer, we'll just do a welcome automation. So it's, hey, welcome to, you know, Sam's Dispensary. This is what we're all about. Uh, love to have you. And then from there on out, it's just real-time, daily-ish emails. Uh, so they're, again, like today the weather is, you know, 80 degrees here in St. Louis. I'm like, hey, it's a, it's a good 80-degree weather. Get outside today in, in St. Louis, you know. And then it, it feels like it's real because it's coming from a, from a person. Yeah. But well, I like how you followed up by basically saying that you do do some segmentation, you do do some automation. And I'm so glad I got right. a little bit, you know, the basic <laughs> stuff. Um, and so yeah, another, super, super basic. Yeah. 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 Well, the basic, but necessary. Right. And another right. thing I'm curious about um, is the sender reputation. Um, and so, as you know, this could be a big thing if you're spending, if you're sending out big bulk emails is how you can protect your sender reputation. Uh, do you have any strategies in place for that? Or do you use their corporate email? Do you use your own domains? I'm curious to learn more. Yeah, so we just send it from whatever. Most of the, the, the POS systems have it built in. Yeah. Um, and so like Clavio is another one that, that we've used. And really, if you're sending good stuff, it's not a problem. It's a, It's like any sort of my content creation, if you, then, then it's not spam, like back to your, you know, your client, you're not spamming them because they're opening it and they're not unsubscribing. And they, I mean, of course, some people are going to unsubscribe. That's just part of the deal. But if you have, you know, a 1% unsubscribe rate, that's, that's great. Um, you know, so it's, again, it's just the, the quality of the content that you're, that you're sending to people is the, is the best way to insulate yourself from any sort of, you know, ban or, or getting kicked off different platforms. I've never, ever had a problem of, hey, idiot, you stop sending people stuff or we're going to kick you off. Uh, so that's, again, it's it's very simple. Don't spam people. And then they, they're they going to want to hear from you. And guess what? Then they're going to want to buy from you also. Yeah. Uh, to kind of follow up on that, um, to kind of keep your open rates high and your sender reputation high, do you have some strategies in place for, the inactive subscribers, you haven't read an email in maybe three months or do you, do you take them off the list? Do you have any strategies in place or recommendations there? Yeah, so we'll we'll scrub the list. I would like to say every three months, but it's every six months. Uh, so if you haven't opened one of our emails in the previous 90 days, we'll take you off the list, uh, which which really helps. But, but, but back to the, uh, I probably should add this. This is probably the most important part of writing these emails is that it's hard when you look at uh, you know, we have got a list of 20,000 people. Those are actually 20,000 people where a lot of times you get into your head, you're just writing a big bulk, you know, email. But there are actually people, like human beings that open up those emails on the other side. So I think when you keep that in mind, like, oh, a, a person is really going to going to open this. Then it, then you start writing for people, not for 
trying to sell people all the time. It's like this, I think this will, you know, whatever you talk about will really help this person who's going to open it. Uh, so that's, again, back, back to that, that's probably the, the most important piece is that you're, you're writing to another human being. Uh, but yeah, so as far as like keeping your list clean, yeah, scrub it every, again, every three months would be perfect. Every six months is even better because then your open rates are, are still going to be higher. Um, and that's what a lot of these, well, most of the email platforms are looking at that. So if you've got a really crappy open rate, um, then your score is going to go down and then they're going to stop send, sending emails. So that's that's probably the most important thing um, is just to keep a keep a healthy email list and people will come and go. You can't take personally, you know, you, yeah. you never, you never know what, why people leave or why they got on the list in the first place. Yeah. I think another thing I, I forgot to bring up, I, I've been working with a business coach for a while. His name's Frankie Dan. Shout out Frank. You're awesome. Um, and so when he's, I, I, I've seen, I've seen, his, I see, yeah, I've seen his stuff a lot. I, I like what he does. Yeah. He, he's, a a, he's just a good guy too. And so one yeah. of the things he recommends for like email, especially when not necessarily for maybe what you're doing for outreach, um, so he said he'll have us reach out to what we're called shoe stores, where we're basically not working, right. reaching out directly to potential clients, but to the people that they buy from. And so he always told, tells us that when we're starting on email, so Google them for two, two, three seconds, find something about them and start the email with something about them. Uh, maybe something that they're working on or just something that you noticed. And I'm curious about how this could maybe tie into email marketing for cannabis. If there's some way that we personalize these emails to really um, boost our open rates, boost our revenue from these emails, or what, 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 what exactly your thoughts are on that, just personalization with email marketing? Yeah, that would be, again, maybe AI will take us there one day where they see, like right now, obviously you say, you know, hey, hey, Sam, hey, Samuel, whatever, you know, and then you write it. So that's personalized. Uh, but that, that's about as basic as you can possibly get. Um, now, the segmentation does help that because... Yeah, it does. Yeah, but look, yeah, let's say you are a, you know, you like this particular flower, whatever it is. Uh, you could write more about that. But as, yeah, as far as like the Frankie Finn stuff where, you know, let's say I'm trying to trying to sell to you, I'd look up, oh, you, hey, you just got married. How's, how's that going? That type thing. <laughs> you and can't that's super 3,000 customers. No. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the rub. But again, I, I bet one day we will. Uh, oh. But yeah, as far as getting too deep into the personalization. I don't, I haven't seen anything in the last 10 years that has, that has changed about that. It's always just, Hey, you know, you put your short code in, Hey, first name, Hey, last name, whatever it is. But yeah. And then maybe just because we know what you, what you bought. Yeah. Um, Other than yeah that, that, I don't know either. That's what I'm asking. I don't know. No. And, and you could even with the, I guess you could per, not. I know you can personalize emails with people who bought this also like this. So the the Amazon thing as well, yeah. part of the segmentation. So maybe ideas to run with. <laughs> yeah, and I they all move the needle a little bit. I'm I'm sure. Yeah. yeah the, the the big one that moves the needle a lot is just sending the getting out of your comfort zone and sending good educational, entertaining emails to your to your people, and then. I'm sure you read this somewhere, you know, you only need a thousand, um, you know, super fans in your business and then you've got whatever business you want. So that helps create those ambassadors for your brand as well. So it does so much that people, they feel involved. And another good email to write is what's going on, what's going on in, in the Fisher dis dispensary. Oh, you know, Ryan, Ryan was just promoted and people want to hear about that. I mean, look at all the goofy, uh, I real, re, reality is very much in quotes. The reality shows out there. People just love to see what, what's going on in other people's lives. So that's that's also another powerful email to, to send that people really enjoy. That's a good idea. Let, let's change topics here a little bit. Uh, let, let's talk about how we can kind of track and measure the success from these email campaigns. And so I'm just curious right off, the, right off the get go here, what you think are the major KPIs for tracking the success of your email campaigns and maybe how you also track these yeah, so um, the the main one. So the we've been talking about open rate quite a bit. That it's not a vanity metric, but it's it's not the most important metric. So basically, you've got you've got three. You've got the open rate, the click click through rate. So people who have actually clicked on your call to action to go to the website, and then the most important thing is the revenue. Yeah. So 
And in that order, I guess you would like revenue is, is the most important. Um, you need the click through rate, or I'm sorry, you need the open rate to get to the click through rate. So I guess you have to you have to gauge them like that one, two, three. Because again, you, we could have the great we could have a hundred percent open rate, but if it doesn't result in any sort of revenue, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. Uh, so that's that's what we we focus on, and how the tracking guys put all that together is beyond me. Uh, <laughs> other than right, it's the I know as much as UTM codes. You put that on every email, um, and somehow the the magic happens behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I, I really functionally don't know how that works, but I I just get the report like, okay, this is great. Well, it is pretty complicated now, and I mean, I mean, maybe you could do like an affiliate code to track each of the clicks that led to a sale or something like that, or I don't know. Yeah, it's weird because then it's okay. So he he or she got to the website this way, but then left and then came back another way. So yeah. it, again, tracking is never going to be perfect, but it's it's pretty great right now. Um, like I said, yeah, especially with our our display ads, and for that we just use uh, Google Tag Manager. So I, get, I don't know if you could use that on email or not. That's that's not my department. You don't want that to be my department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, right? Uh, I'm also curious, uh, what are you kind of moving for a little bit? Uh, so we're, we've already been on this call for about 30 minutes. Respect your time. No, we only booked about a half hour here. So I have four yeah. questions, if we can do that. That's all right. And so kind of just... Um, a little bit more fun topics now, just kind of just trends with email marketing for 2024 and beyond. What what do you think, Ryan? Uh, what, what, you know, like recently the DKIM, SPF, I think it's going to pronounce this, but a new thing. What, what do you think are going to be the next things to look out for to ensure that you keep your open rates high, that you keep your revenue high and your click-through rates high? Uh, yeah, I mean, staying compliant is, is a big deal. Uh, and again, that goes back to just giving people quality content. Uh, you know, I know we use compliance quite a bit in this industry, but I, I would imagine you're going to see more people switching over to the to the plain text email uh, because I, I, eventually the word's going to get out that this that this works like like gang bus, gangbusters. And it's I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry to tell the uh, the people who design the beautiful pretty emails. It's way cheaper just to the type of plain text email than it is to put all the graphics in there and, and, and make it look pretty. So I would imagine that is kind of going to go, it's going to trend that way. And then eventually it'll trend back the other way. And, but this is what's working now. So people will just mimic that. And maybe there'll be, there's probably something else that is coming down the pipe that we don't know about yet. But I think that's the trend that that's the trend that I'm seeing in my world. Uh, but my world is pretty focused, so we'll we'll see. Yeah, and to kind of follow up on that specifically, what do you think is going to be the role of artificial intelligence next five ten years? It's I think people are going to abuse it first of all when when it, now that it's such a new thing they don't know how to use it yet, uh, and it's I think what'll like we'll get to this tipping point where people are just not even proofreading what they're doing. If they're, let's say they're writing an email in, in chat GPT and it's going to come out like sports Illustrated is a great example. They wrote all these AI articles. They, they fired a bunch of people and then it came out like now they, their credibility is just gone. Like I'll, I'll never read a sports Illustrated article for the rest of my life. Cause <laughs> yes, <I'm sorry>. he, <laughs> right. Oh, it's so bad. And then the, well, but then the idiot, it was, it was Google, right? Where they were showing their, what is their AI called? Uh, whatever. But their, their example was to write a fan letter to an Olympian. I'm like, could you have missed the mark any more than that? It's like, no, those are personalized things that need to come like from your heart. If you're going to send an email to, you know, an athlete that you like enough to send a, a fan letter to. Um, but I think it'll, just like anything else, you know, the internet was going to change the world. Everything was going to change. TV was going to change the world, but it'll just be used as, as a tool to either brainstorm ideas or to get you started. Uh, it's really great if you've got a little bit of writer's block some days. Uh, but yeah, it's, 
I think it's getting overblown in, in our world. Uh, but now in 10 years, shoot, I have no idea. In the next few years, I can see where, okay, it's just a tool to get you going. And then your brand has got to take over at that point. Yeah, we were talking about that before we press record here. I don't know about you personally, but if I see an AI written article, I'm pretty sure I already know without even having to literally read the whole article. It just impacts how I view the quality of the article on the website. Completely 100% yeah. agree there. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah, because I've, uh, I've uh, contributed a couple articles to um, some other, you know, like Greenway Media. And it's like if somebody like were to get one past those guys, it's it's their reputation on the line, which is super, super dicey when you think about it. Uh, but, yeah, it's – I think if you're a good editor, you kind of know if that's real or not real. And pe- people don't want – that stuff they want to know that it's coming from a real person yeah well let's hope it stays that way for the next 10 years all right go back to you uh you're in the cannabis niche let's talk about cannabis for the last few questions if that if that's yeah. right can you tell me about the first time you tried cannabis uh my my buddy eric rinsing and uh it was i don't even think we started class yet i didn't start it and my first experience was freshman year of college, like maybe a week before classes start. And it was, I'll never forget that, you know, the old school dugout with a, it had a, a red bat in there. And I was like, hey, Travis, I'm like, all right, I'm in college now, man, why not? So that was, that was it. I, I mean, I don't know what, it, what I know was marijuana. <laughs> That's about as far as we knew back then what it was. Cause I mean, shoot, that was 19, I'm going to age myself. That was 19, 1994. So it's it's been a minute. What what was your first impressions? I I it was hot. I can I because I never smoked cigarettes. I never smoked anything, uh-huh. and it and it was it took me a couple times to smoke it before I actually felt the effects of it. Um, and then I overdid it a couple times. But yeah, so he's uh, to this day he's my buddy. That if I ever have a question about it, I call him. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, it's. It, it was it was different because I you know I always just drank beers growing up, growing up you know everything we just described is illegal. <laughs> that was illegal back then when we were eighteen years old. Obviously, weed was illegal anyway. But yeah, yeah. Now since nineteen, we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> it was like twenty years before it was uh, medically legal. But right, no, no shame there. I I also did it before it was legal, so I'll just be out straight straightforward honest. <laughs> Right. And these days, in 2024, what's your favorite cannabis product? You know, I'm so this is this is a great story, not a great story, but so I have a another buddy who is a professional. Um, you know, he, he with edibles and he's a indica guy. So it's almost like two two years ago to the day. So he he gave me you know probably Starburst size edible. I don't know what it was, but I. I, I jokingly like, oh, I OD'd on him. Like, I think I saw God at some point, and I was like so out of control. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do this again. So I am, like, all I'll do, like, if I'm playing golf, I'll have just like like five milligram, uh, you know, sativa is perfect for for me. I, I'm not a professional. It's just, you know, chills you out, and uh, and actually, I've had some of my best rounds on that. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not a pro. <laughs> I think that's the best way to do it is just light doses and just small daily doses if you're gonna do it daily, but definitely agree with you there. And then yeah, uh and it's, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good. No, I was gonna say I've got you know, I've got a couple of buddies that I, I didn't realize this for, for years. I'm like, well, how much you know do you take in a day? He's like, oh like a thousand milligrams. Like excuse me, I didn't know that was a thing. But that's <laughs> That's every day. Yeah, it's, it's to, to each his own. But yeah, I'm like, I think I might be dead. <laughs> well, maybe if it like gets your heart rate up and you do that every day for right. years or something. I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll see it once they get some more studies done on that. And then, right. I'll, well, be, I'll be the first. For you, Ryan. <laughs> uh, yeah, appreciate you being on here for 40 minutes. Oh, that's great. For a while. Uh, but knowing what you know, looking into your crystal ball, in the next five to ten years, where's the cannabis industry? 
Um, owned by bigger corporations. <laughs> so you're not the first person to tell me that, and I think you might be on to something there, honestly. Honestly, well, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. But that would make the most sense, would it not? That we get like a Coca-Cola, something like that. Yeah, you, I mean, obviously we're, we're seeing the consolidation happening already where bigger outfits are just buying up dispensaries. Yeah. Uh, and I've, I've talked to a bunch of friends who have a good amount of money who are invested in it. And they're all they talk about is the is the exit. So are they is big tobacco going to come in? Is big pharma going to come in? You know, is Coca-Cola? I mean, who? I would guess big tobacco and big pharma, but I don't know. Hopefully that doesn't happen because I don't want to work for either of those yeah, <laughs> industries. Uh, but that's, I think the the conventional wisdom is it's it's going that direction. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I definitely appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for all your insights. Uh, thanks for giving us a free lesson on cannabis email marketing. Um, and yeah, my pleasure. This is fun. Yeah, I wish you all the best. Um, hope you have a great day and excited to talk yeah. to you soon. You do the same. Thanks, my man.